Hello everyone, let's take a look at the reading 15 study questions for the first part of Sophocles' Antigone. Number one, Ismene says to Antigone, it's not a woman's place. Put this remark in context, what does she mean? Well, um, Antigone has proposed that together they bury the body of their brother Polynices. Um, the, that could be a woman's place in his many in his many's mind. Women, I think, were tasked with that for preparing the body of their relatives for burial. But that's not all that's at stake. Were they to do this to bury Polynices, they would be defying Creon, the ruler of the city, and going against the, the power, the political authority of the city. And that is not a woman's place in his man's mind. Women don't do that. Women don't defy men, especially in public and especially over matters of political authority. They don't, they don't challenge political authority and, and, and men in that context. It's, it's clear that that's what she means. That's a big theme in the play, I think. Number two, Antigone says that the gods will be proud of her for what? Why? I think it's clear they'll be proud of her for burying her brother. Uh, why? Because she would thereby be upholding what she considers to be the higher law, the divine law, rather than the human law, the law of the city, represented by her uncle Creon. So she believes that she's on a divine mission or that her act of burying Polynices would also be an act of piety, doing what the gods want. She's absolutely convinced that the gods want the burial of Polynices. Number three, Creon says that a man can't be truly known until what? Until he rules, until he has political authority. Uh, it is uh, when he has power that he is revealed for what he truly is. Uh, she looked it up. It's in the first appearance of Creon. Until a man, this is the bottom of page nine, has passed this test of office and proved himself in the exercise of power, he can't be truly known. For what he is, I mean. That is, you don't really know somebody until you see how they act when they have political power. And this is, of course, a huge irony in the play because Creon probably doesn't know himself until, I mean, he's right. It's just that, as we know, if we read the whole play, Creon is a disaster as a leader. You know, that is his uh, law about burying Polynesia's body and especially his decision to go ahead and enforce the law when Antigone attempts to bury Polynices is an absolute disaster for him, for the city, for everybody. So it's I ironic. I mean, it's in this Greek tragedy, you're supposed to have irony. That he's absolutely right, I guess. You don't really know somebody until they have power, uh, who they really are. And yeah, he finds out who he really is, which is not pretty, what he really is. Number four, the chorus on page pages 16 to 17 is quite famous. What is it about? I just wanted to, uh, to note this uh, chorus. This is often just called the Antigone Chorus. Uh, many of the wonders, but none more wonderful than man. Let's see what his translation is. Among the many wonders of the world, where is the equal of this creature man? It is a, um, a her very heroic description of human beings, of... Um, what they have accomplished, what they can do, how clever they are, how they use their imagination and their reason and their cunning to overcome all obstacles except for, except for death. Uh, I, that's what it's about, mostly. And then um, it's about the city, right? It's about not only the technologies that they create to... The, to, to, to go off into nature on ships and find ways of snaring birds and using the earth 
for their benefit, but also they create the city. Truth is the treadle of his loom and justice the shuttle. Uh, but then there is a warning that you cannot, what is that, overstep what the city allows. So it's, it's complex. What it's about, it's, it's great. It, it's been used many times, referred to many times. Usually in isolation from the rest of the play, but it's, uh, it's important enough. I thought it was important to draw your attention to it, emphasize it, and note it. <coughs> Number five. <coughs> when Antigone is caught and brought before Creon, what does she made, say made her defy him? That's actually a question I thought I knew the answer to that generally, but let's, uh, let's take a look at it because it's quite important. Antigone brought in, this is page 20. Um, it's an amazing scene. You know, imagine that she's talking to her own uncle, who's also the ruler of the city. And she's defied not only the law of the city, but defied him personally. And she, he's a member of her family. So it's a very fraught scene. You then, Creon says to her, tell me and be quick about it. Did you or did you not know that the proclamation forbade all this? Did you, did you know that you weren't supposed to bury Polynices? And Antigone says, I did. I did know. How could I not? I didn't everybody. And still, Creon says to her, you dared to disobey the law. And here's the key point. I, Antigone says, I disobeyed because the law was not the law of Zeus, nor the law ordained by justice, dwelling deep among the gods of the dead. What they decree is immemorial and binding for us all. That is this idea that the law of the gods is a higher law. It, it supersedes any human law. The proclamation had your force behind it, but it was mortal force, you know, the force of mere human beings. And I, also immortal, I chose to disregard it. I abide by statutes, utter and Im immutable, unwritten, original, God-given laws. So she defied him because he, in her mind, was violating the law of the gods, and the law of the gods cannot be negated. And if she's convinced that the law of the gods is that Polynesians should be buried, then what she seems to be telling him is that she has no choice because she has a higher authority than him that she has to answer to. <clears throat> Number six, was Antigone right in burying Polynesia's Why or why not? Um, that's, of course, there's no right answer to that. It's a matter of opinion, but um, it's the main question of the play, I suppose, whether she was actually right in doing so. Um, I think in a certain way, reading the play, reading not only, well, you know, not only our, our our own response to it, but reading the response of the characters to what she did. That the uh, answer may be clearly that she was right. And she probably was. I, I, but I, but I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. If you're really, was she right? I mean, was she admirable? Yes. Is she, uh, w was she uh, courageous? Yes. But was she right? Well, that depends on whether, number one, she really is doing what the, well, number one, that there really is a divine law, right? And number two, that she's actually doing what the gods want. How does she know? Uh, Polynices was somebody who attacked the city. Um, is it obvious that he did deserve a burial? Maybe it is. I don't know, but it's at least something worth thinking about. 